Hi there, welcome to our study in Titus. Today we are going to start in Titus 2 verse 1 and we are going to finish out this book in verse 15 of chapter 3. My name is Stuart Gould. It's been such a pleasure to bring this study to you in the book of Titus. In chapter 2 and 3, Paul is really giving some examples of how people are to live, showing Titus how he should teach the other people, the, the elders, the women, how they should teach the younger women, and how we should be an example of the Word of God and how we ought to live. And this is a great encouragement to us, uh, as I mentioned before, that the teaching here in Titus is timeless, that it is applicable to us even in our life today. And I think you will really enjoy this study today. Once again, thank you for joining me in our study in Titus. As I mentioned already, we are in chapter two, uh, verse one. In chapter one, Paul was telling Titus that he left him in Crete to give some instructions to the people to appoint elders in all the towns. And he was giving him some warnings and some things to watch out for. In chapter 2 here, he's going to start sharing with him about some of the things that they must teach the people. So let's just jump right in here to Titus chapter 2 verse 1. You must teach what is according with sound doctrine. So this is what he's encouraging Titus. Teach what is sound doctrine, not some flaky thing. Keep to the truth the things that I taught you, right? Teach older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and endurance. Okay, so the older men, this is what he's to teach them. To be worthy of respect. To be self-controlled. You know, not just doing whatever you want. To be sound in faith. Keep your faith on the Lord. Keep your faith where it's supposed to be, right? Don't walk by sight, but walk by faith. To have an aspect of love in your life that is shown and endure the life on this earth and walk through it with the faith and love that God has given you. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanders or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is godly. So he's giving instructions to the older men, older women, younger women, younger men. He's giving us all instructions here, right? And so he's saying to the older women, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live. What is reverent? To be in awe of God, to be mindful of God in what we do. Not to be slanders, you know, gossip slanders, addicted, not to be addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Nowadays, we could add that to dope and all, all kinds of other things that we could be addicted to. But here, Paul is encouraging them to live a godly life. Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. These elder women, if they're walking in the things of God, then they're going to be able to train the younger women. The younger women are going to see how they are working, and they're going to be able to train them, and they're going to listen to them. They can teach them to love their husbands and their children, to be self-controlled and to be pure, and not to be running around and doing things they shouldn't be doing, right? And to be busy at home, and to be kind, not running from house to house, gossiping and doing all kinds of things to be subject to their husband so that no one will malign the word of God, so that their witness cannot twist what the word of God is saying to us, right? And everything set them as an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about you. So here he's switching over to Titus, and he's saying to him, in everything, set them as an example. Be an example to them by doing what is good. You set the example. That's what a leader must do, right? A leader must set the example for those who are following him. If you look at the situation between a shepherd and a sheep, a shepherd always walks in front of the sheep and the sheep follow him. 
They follow him or her wherever they're going. The only time a shepherd goes behind the sheep and pushes the sheep is when he's taking them to slaughter. And that's not a good thing, right? Often though, there's a lot of people in the church, leaders in the church who are pushing the sheep and not leading them. And so Paul is saying here to Titus, set a good example and do what is good, right? In your teaching, show integrity and seriousness and sound speech that cannot be condemned. Teach the things that I have taught you. Teach the things that are of God. Don't teach things that are, are so far out there that, that nobody can follow, right? So that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. That they will be, won't have any condemnation to speak about Paul or Titus or the ones that were there because they could see it in the life of Titus. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them and not talk back to them and not steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted so that in every way they will make the teachings about God, our Savior, attractive. This is a thing that's important. As Christians, people should be able to see our life and see a difference. They should be able to see that there's something different about us. They should be able to see, you know, I want to be like that person. I, I want to be like that person. St. Francis of Uzizi says, you should go into the villages and preach the gospel. And if it's necessary, you should talk too. What he's saying is we should be able to preach the gospel by the example of who we are and what we do. How we react to things and how we do things. That should be an example of our Christian life. Amen. And this is what Paul is saying to Titus as well. And he's in, given instructions to teach the slaves to do what is right. You know, you, these guys, you're working for them. Do it as, as you are unto God, right? Work as you, you are unto God. Joseph was such a example for us from the Old Testament where Joseph was a slave. And even though he was a slave, he worked as though he was working to God. And because of that, he got promoted to the highest rank so many times, right? Until he was prepared that he became the prime minister of all of Egypt. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. To who? To all men. And this is what Paul is saying. It is for everyone. It is for the Gentile, for the Jewish people. It's for all people. It's there. It's the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. His name is Jesus. He is coming to all of us, right? It teaches us to say no to the ungodliness and world passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from the wickedness and to purify for himself a people who are his very own, eager to do what is good. This is the calling that God has had. And Paul is just encouraging Titus here and encouraging us at the same way, right? It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to world passion, to live self-controlled and upright godly lives. We wait for this blessed hope, this glorious appearing of our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us and redeemed us from the wickedness and the purity for himself, a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. That's what we want to be, right? People that are eager to do what is good. Those then are the things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. These are what he's supposed to teach. These are the instructions he's supposed to uh, give. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. I'm giving you the authority. God has given you the authority. Walk in the authority we have. We're just going to jump right over to chapter 3. He says, remind the people to be subject to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient and to be ready to do what is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility towards all men. What a blessing, right? What a powerful word this is. Remind the people to be subject to the rulers. Okay, there's rulers that are there. You need to be subject to them. Except for when they are giving rules uh, that are contrary to God, that, that stop you from being obedient to God, right? And to be obedient and be ready to do whatever is good. And here's another one that I think 
many of us need to learn not to slander anyone, right? To slander no one, but to be peaceful and considerate and show true humility towards all men. That's what our heart is supposed to be. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passion and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He has saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is who we are, right? We have the hope of this eternal life. We have this thing working in us. One time we were like all the people of the world. We were foolish, we were disobedient, we were deceived, we were slaves of all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy and being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. We have salvation not because of works, not because of the things we have done, but because of what God has done. It is through His mercy that He has given us His grace, that He has given us the ability to have faith in Jesus Christ. And He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. We became a new creation, right? Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is God and the new has come. We are a new creation when we come under Jesus, right? And this is what he's saying. We have this hope of, of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. These trustworthy sayings, right? Do the things that Paul is teaching here. What Paul is saying it is, is trustworthy. It is good. This is a good thing for you to do. I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful and devote themselves to what is good. Do what is right. Do what is, is honorable before God that is going to bring glory to Him because that's one of the, our purposes is, is to bring glory to God, right? And we bring glory to God through the life that we live. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about law because these are unprofitable and useless. I mentioned before that I used to argue about scriptures and stuff so much and talk. We thought that was a lot of fun to do that kind of thing. But it, it's not. It's, I, I finally came to a point where I realized there was no value in that because the answer is always Jesus. The answer is Him. But if somebody brings up something now and I don't understand it or I don't agree with it, I go into the Word of God to see if my thinking is right. I go into the Word of God and see if what this person is teaching is right. Paul commended, Paul commended the Bereans because when he was preaching the Word, they would go back home and open up the Scriptures and find out if what Paul was preaching matched up with the prophets and the Word of God that they had at the time. And this, we need to be like that. When we hear teaching, especially if it's something we haven't heard before or something different, we need to get into the Scriptures and study it out ourselves. We need to find out if what is being said is truth. Amen? Warn a divisive person once, and then warn him a second time. After that, have nothing to do with him. If somebody's in there bringing divisiveness into your congregation, then warn them and warn them a second time. But if they don't change, then have nothing to do with them because they are going to cause a lot of problems in your group, right? You may be sure that such a man is warped and sinful. He is self-condemned. He's self-condemned by the things he says, right? He's condemning himself even. As soon as I send Artemis and Tychius to you, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis because I have decided to winter there. Do everything you can to help Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their way to see that they have everything they need. Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order that they may provide for daily necessities and not live unproductive lives. 
Everyone with me sends you greetings. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace with you all. And Paul brings this letter to an end by speaking and encouraging them to do the things that is right. This is the whole point of this letter. Follow after the true teachings of God and do what he is saying. Walk after that. Be an example. Be who God wants us to be. Well, this is a very short book and we've gone through this book in two sessions. I think it's been a great encouragement for us. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your love. We thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you, Father, for the words that Paul has penned to Titus and the encouragement it is to us. Father, let us take these words that we've uh, studied over these last couple sessions and, Father, just apply them to our hearts that we can be the witness that you are calling us to be. Father, we just pray for those who are struggling, that you would help them, that you are touching each one that needs to be healed, that is sick or that has some sort of problem. Father, we just pray that you would touch them, give them a healing. If they need a creative miracle, that you would do that for them. And if they're struggling in their heart and soul, Father, that you would, you would heal them because you come to heal us, body, soul, and spirit. For that, we are truly thankful. Father, we thank you for the technology that allows us to uh, send your word around. We know as we put your word out, it will not return void. And we give you honor and glory for all the technology and the ability to do these things because it is through you and you alone that makes this possible. And for that, we are truly thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Stuart Gould and it has been such a pleasure to bring this study to you. Remember, God loves you and so do I. Until we see you next time where we start another new book. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do I. Okay, girls, take us home.